Well, it, once again, I've got Herbert on, coming on to take me on here. I don't know, no, I, I'm really not looking to challenge you today, but I am, well, yeah, maybe I am. <laughs> Herbert, planning. Whatever. <laughs> This is Randy Thank Kirk. Thank you so much, Randy. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> this is Randy Kirk. And hit like, hit subscribe, do all that kind of stuff. And then Herbert, what I want to do is I'm gonna I'm gonna do rapid fire stuff. I <laughs> want you, I want to get you on the record. I think you've probably already answered every one of these questions on your program, but I'm just, you know, so rapid fire. We're gonna start with you're in my favorite topic, Optimus. Okay, what do you now think? After, I know that I've been banging on you and trying to get you to come over my side on Optimus. Let's see how far, let's see how far that's happened. Okay. Number one, what do you think it's going to cost to make Optimus in volume? Oh yeah. So I've interviewed four Tesla bot experts, bot experts in general. Everybody says by looking at all the parts and you can see every single part on the bot as well. Um, it's pretty well known. Everything that's going to be in the bot, the cost is going to be less than $10,000. Um, and of course that number changes based on the, the the manufactured hand maneuvered is going to be hundreds of thousands and but the eventual cost will be less than ten thousand so i would go with that number i feel like it's pretty comfortable uh just again from my interviews with all these uh bot experts so okay. i'll go with all what right. they said <laughs> all right when when will we have over 100 in use in the factory okay so this is where you got in trouble <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, because, you know, the estimate that we had, um, you and Scott, was that there was going to be this, you know, 500 plus number of bots by the end of this year. We saw Elon say that, you know, there's maybe 10 that's uh, walking around today, but what he did say. So he threw water on people who were more optimistic about it. I had kind of like said maybe 100 bots by the end of this year. But what Elon said was by November, once we get the actuators finalize, we're going to be able to then take that bot and be able to then, I don't know exact words, I can't remember, we we looked at this transcript, but basically it, it, it sounded like it was going to be the bot that they're going to do at scale, they're going to start making more of for next year. And then he did say that by next year, it will be a useful bot used in the factory. So it is one of the reasons why people say it's going to be, you know, instead of saying, oh, there's only 10, then there'll be 30, then there'll be 35 and 40. The reason why many of us are thinking it's going to have to be 100 or more is because the whole point about bots learning or cars learning, which are really just bots on wheels, is the more that you have, the more data, the more visual that it can have, the more uh, opportunities for it to grab things and move things around, to test its uh, understanding of the environment and you need hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of bots. We actually even had the CIO of the OpenAI, um, uh, uh, the, the part where he talked about how they decided not, for OpenAI themselves, he said that we decided not to become a bot company ourselves, is because in order to do this, you need thousands, and in fact, he said tens of thousands of bots to do this properly. So instead, what OpenAI decided to was find a bot company that they then invested in, right? He said that himself. Right. So, you know, so the whole the whole thing now points to the fact that yes, things were slowed down in terms of our expectation to November, but afterwards we do see a lot. So, long answer to your question, I do expect a hundred by next year for sure, if not, you know, more not more than that at that point. Next year, January, March. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I cannot oh, okay, say this right, anymore. Right, right, right. Not going to jump right, okay, through that. Okay. Pilot into line, trouble already. <laughs> so pilot line producing next year. That we we would agree on that one. So I mean, or even depends, a full right? production if, line. If if you yeah, what he said was the one item that we needed to build ourselves is the actuators. That's yeah. what they he, the idea brought up. Right. And we had already heard him say this stock comment already before that they were building their own actuators. Right. For so why. So we thought it had already been so settled. You'd seen them in action with bots, but for them to say, by, we think that by November, that's when the actuators will be resolved. But it sounds like that's the last remaining part. So again, like I said, the parts of a bot are not that uh, complicated. The only reason the actuators are complicated is because they purposely are trying to make them a scalable product. If they weren't trying to make the scalable and manufacturable, it's ready but they're trying to finalize design because they want to have one actuator 
the same actuator to be used in the 40 parts of the bot. That way they just make one actuator. They don't have to make two versions of it. They just make one version and it's used for every part of the bot and all that. And so that's why it's taken a little bit longer. But once it's done, making these parts is not hard, especially for Tesla. So the scalability, we know that they already hired 50, if at least 50 people to work on the Tesla bot and they're already designing the production line. So, so by, some, by next year, that's, this will be already in a uh, scaled kind of model instead of just hand, hand built. Will it be offered for sale? No, 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 no. Lease this is where you and I differ. I've oh, always no, no, said- No, 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 we're agreeing. I'm saying lease only, lease only. Oh no. Well, even for lease or sale, it's not oh. gonna be offered to, first of all, it's not gonna be offered to consumers. No, I know no. Warren Redlick is all about that. It's not. This is going to be used by Tesla at their factories. The first thousand, first 5,000 will be all them. And then I would expect them to offer it, maybe sell it to their subcontractors for their car manufacturer, because the the savings for the Tesla is so massive. Once that's moving along, they might start offering it to, to, to others. Now, the part that kind of like, it's a, it's a one, it's a, it's a weird answer because I would also expect that once they have it in scale and it's actually so easy to build the bots and then they have so many of them, they could start offering it to, you know, it'll be like, they'll use everything that you want. And then all of a sudden they'll be able to make more. But remember that uh, Tom Jew, uh, the COO for, well, I don't know exact title. I can't see, I think he's still senior sales and global for global uh, manufacturing. He did say that he expects 5,000 Tesla bots for Giga Mexico. Right. That's Giga Mexico could be up within a year. All right. So let's say, let's say I don't, let's say we don't care whether it's the end of 2024 or the beginning of 2025, when they start offering this to new to folks outside of their sphere, um, lease sale, how much? Yeah. So we, uh, we all agree. It's going to be a lease. Um, okay. the, it's an ongoing software as a service. Tesla will own the bot. They're going to just lease the usage of this. Um, I don't know how much it is. I I've, I've had many shows with Scott Walter. He has shown tables and graphs of what he thinks the amounts are going to be. Uh, I personally have not done the, the math or tried to work that out. Okay, and it, it, the funny, the fun part about this whole thing is it does get very, very nutty. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, what does. Elon very has nutty. said. It's... Because, you know, like we said, let's say that the cost is not ten thousand. Let's say it's twenty thousand. Let's say thirty thousand. It almost doesn't matter what the cost is, matter. because these bots could last for a long time. And the value to the person buying it, if you add up there, even if you take minimum wage or you take a fifty dollar per hour salary plus the benefits plus the, the, you know, how many how many hours it can work at a time, the value to an employer is so is in hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, it's about fifty thousand dollars. About fifty thousand dollars per shift per year. Yeah. As a minimum. And so again, as a minimum. <laughs> this part I think that not everybody is talking about this, but if it's such if you think this through and if a bot is that is so 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 useful especially to Tesla. And we've already identified, you know, just by going down the uh, the automotive line, Scott and I were looking at the China Sh Giga yeah. Shanghai. Yeah. And every time the video was showing, he was going, see that guy, see that guy, <laughs> see that guy. Each of the jobs that you can see on the video that they were doing could be replaced by bot. There's gonna be so many things that are replaceable. Yeah. Um, and so it's like, why would you as Tesla, why would you, why would you not at this point basically do bots, like put all of your effort, right? Why do cars? Now I'm not saying they're going to drop cars, but the <laughs> bot is so much more profitable, you know, uh, than a car. But once the bots are working in the car, all of a sudden the car becomes incredibly profitable, but it's also part of the mission. Right. But the point being that the bot has so much potential that wouldn't you as a company then just boom, we become a, we're a bot company now and the cars is a secondary line item so that's what i fully expect you spin, to off, you spin off the car division <laughs> this will be a randy kirk this is the first okay i we're now predicting that we're going to spin off the car division. oh randy oh randy <laughs> please no <laughs> all right let's go to energy energy lathrop will be fully ramped when yeah so we just talked about it in my show just yes. now right so we know that uh the first quarter they had four gigawatt hours lathrop will have 40 gigawatt hours when it's fully ramped in the second quarter, they doubled that. So they're at basically 10 out of 40, that's 25%. But I fully expect that they're gonna be fully ramped 
uh, by the end of this year. So year. we're at 10. Yeah. They, you know, it could be just the 20. Maybe, 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 you know, so that's doubling of what, if they just did what they did in the first six, they'll be at 20. So, but we know that, you know, this is like lines. Once they've got it yeah. ready to go, it's faster and faster to put the second, the third and fourth line. So maybe not by the end of this year to be fully ramped, but certainly way past, um, <clears throat> way by the end of this year, it'll be way past uh, 75%, 80%. Okay. So maybe first so maybe quarter. Q1. First quarter. Yeah. All right. Okay. How about uh, when does Shanghai begin shipping uh, uh, mega packs? Shanghai shipping mega packs. Okay. So again, we talked about it just in our show, my show right. just recently here. So we, they announced the Shanghai mega pack factory, but no one's heard of Boo. No one, no Boo. <laughs> What's the term? Yeah, we haven't heard Boo. <laughs> all right. And so we're all going, hey, it's it's late. But Brian White from My Tesla Weekend has said that there's been several times where all of a sudden they said, oh, see this building here? It's actually the, you know, this building that's been creating the dry electrode for the 4680 and nobody knew that they were doing that. So it's still a very much a possibility that the factory is already being built and they just haven't shared it with us. It's also a possibility that everything's been delayed. Basically, so basically, Lathrop, basically Lathrop was a great example. It was basically done before anybody. Yeah. <laughs> even you even so people are telling me that this lathrop is the size of a target yeah not big yeah it's not that big at all yeah. and they could take any building yeah and convert it right and it, it took lathrop less than a year mm -hmm. to from from the date of groundbreaking and then to the date of actually launch and they never announced it it was just a line item in the earnings call that lathrop was uh <clears throat> alive now if because lathrop is already designed. We're all expecting that Mega Pack in Shanghai will be much faster. And you know, if you are waiting, if if there's a reason why they're not doing the Mega Pack factory in Shanghai, it's because they're waiting for Lathrop to scale. But it's already Lathrop's already passed the second line, so they've already agreed that they're they already know how to make these production lines. So th that's not it, right? So I I suspect I'm more in the line to think that it's already happening. And we're just going to hear it very soon and it's already moving forward uh that's what i suspect so yeah model three highland is the body, <laughs> is the body changed will it be the sports changed. car that we're seeing yeah. will it be uh you know uh, a definite metal change so just yesterday there's another sighting of a potential new model three but it had the full front bumper covered so now we're seeing instead of in, instead of just the lights being modified and so forth, even the bumpers changing. I I that's my theory. I think there's going to be a sportier version. I think that you can't create a Model Three that the way it looks today because that that was the problem. The problem was it's priced the same as a Model Y. It looks yeah very a smaller Model Y. Now you come up with a Model Two compact car, and it's going to be very much more bare bones because this this is a cheap version. It's a compact car. You can't have a compact a, a Model Three the way it is now. So what you need to do is create a sedan, which is what a massive segment, a forty percent segment, and globally the demand right. for sedans. Right. But I think you need to make it sporty so that it's separated from the the cheap, commodity version of the Model Two, the compact car. Then you got a sporty gun. So I still believe the case, and all the signs are pointing that there's going to be pretty, you know, you know, little tweaks here and there on the front and the bay rear. And uh, so I, that one, I have no idea. I, I'm just totally guessing on that one. When will it be rolled out? That's a hard question to know, right? I mean, it's another one of things, like just like in Cybertruck, we keep seeing it. <laughs> we know it's being tested. So it's like, it feels like it's going to happen soon, but I think the rumors was that it could actually even be Q1 of next year. Wow. Um, the part that I'm confused with is that we know that Cybertruck is absolutely going to launch, whether it's Q3 or Q4. Could this also come out at the same time? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not, if I was to guess, I would say it's going to happen in Q4. Okay. Um... Uh, will the Shanghai version and the Fremont version be identical in looks? Oh, good question. Yeah, yeah, good question. Because I know we do know that they've said before that uh, there's a separate Tesla design team in China. So I, that's a good question. I mean, so far everything's been pretty identical. So I would say that it would be, 
but uh, there is that possibility that it's not because you know like we said there is supposed to be a design team that's separate in china than it is for the us so maybe they would do something that's very specific to the china car china system i would say that the model 3 i suspect is going to be identical but i think the compact car will not be okay yeah. uh, good price for the what will be the price for the base model of the highland in the united states yeah so i've been saying that if you look at the price elasticity curve if you just reduce it by five thousand dollars you know it's going to be massive jump in terms of demand okay so i think that there needs to be a clear pricing segmentation between the model y the model 3 highland and the compact car so i'm expecting that the model the model 3 highland should be at thirty thousand mm -hmm. okay thirty thousand right. okay. and then the, the compact would be at twenty five thousand mm -hmm. um because it's supposed to be like you know even cheaper and so that's that would be like you know 32 30 something like that that would be my guess okay. but for sure in my mind it's got to be sub 30 35. Okay. Sub 35. Be sub 35. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cybertruck. Handover month. Yeah. I'm still a believer it's Q3. Q3. Uh, okay, I, so I, when, I saw, when I heard that September. Q2 earnings call, I was I heard it as very bullish. Um, and now, of course, the caveat that Elon said was that there is, what, 10,000 parts make up this truck, right. <laughs> this vehicle. This vehicle's never been made before, right? right. They've done things that is, it's basically an alien kind of vehicle that's never been done before. So, and it's going to be full of tech. Yeah. And so, at, you know, he was warning that if, that, you know, if in one of those parts of 10,000 is delayed for some reason, then, then this delivery event will be delayed. So, you know, he made it clear that there's lots of risk. You can't count on it, but you can see the cars are everywhere. You can see the tr the, yeah. the vehicles yeah. are out there. The test vehicles are out there and it's almost at the uh, release candidate. You saw that, you know, here's right. the car. Right. Here's the right. first one we've made. You've talked, you've heard him talk about walking the production line. Right. So they've had, and then they had multiple years. <laughs> they've had multiple, because it's been delayed so much. They've yes, had I many know years. Long time to work on. Yeah. So I, 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 so I, I do think it's going to be okay. September of okay. three. Base price. I, I have no idea what the price would be. I'm not one that's uh, guessing on that. Some people okay. are saying 60, but I, the part that confuses me is that people do say it is very typical for Tesla, especially if it's going to be small numbers at the very beginning, but they're going to release, you know, the quad motor, oh, yes, they're going to have the high, they're going to do the high end yeah. and they're going to release it at a high price. So that by the time that they're able to release a low price, it looks really low <laughs> and that's just the way it works. Right. So. I think it's going to be, but it's going to be cheaper than the F one fifty. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we know that because we heard we heard Elon say, right? He tweeted out and he said, "Hey, the F one fifty EV is a is a great car, uh, a truck, and just unfortunately, the, you know, the pricing is challenging. So it's a hint that it's going to be cheaper than that. So when will Mexico break ground? Okay, that one's fun." Uh, we do know that the governor of Mexico just said, well, I don't know, feel like it's three weeks ago yeah. right now that he came out and said that, uh, uh, that, that, that everything seems to be in process and it's moving along quite nicely. And he said at any minute now, this can happen. I think it's going to happen very soon. I expect that for sure in August that they're going to announce the break, the groundbreaking. All right. And how many, different, weeks. how many different models will there be of the gen three car? Okay, so we do know that there's uh, right. first first uh, eighteen months. Well, first they they already said that there's going to be two, right? There's going to be the dedicated robo taxi, and then there's going to be the compact car, correct? Okay. But then they hinted that there's going to be two versions of that compact car. Remember, they showed the one that looks like like a van, a, a van, and then Elon said that there's two versions. So the question is that when he said those two versions. Did he talk about the robo taxi plus the Gen Two, the the compact car, or is it the compact car plus the kind of a van version of it? So I suspect it's going to be three. Yeah. Right off the bat, why? Because it's the unboxed model. 
The right. whole point, one of is the reasons that. why they created the unbox model, and if the, what that is, is that instead of taking a vehicle and moving it through the production line, and every part of the production line is pretty well decided and determined exactly what they do at that moment in time, right? <clears throat> It's the, it's the production line that's been available since Taylor Hicks, since Ford Motor Companies invented it, since the butchering of, of cows, right? Um, this is the Unbox model, which is a reinvention of the production of cars where you, you know, take components of it and then you can plug them together like Lego. So even the electrical systems, the batteries, um, they connect together. What that allows you to do is have a platform and create different kinds of front ends, back ends, top ends, and just plug it in. Yeah, and each yeah. one of those could be made at any at their own production lines. And so it's not going to be that much harder to just create one major production line. And then you have, you know, the, the compact car, the robo taxi, and then you have the minivan. That's why they did it this way is to be able to do that. So I suspect that there'll be three, uh, because there's going to be robo taxi, which is dedicated robo taxi design, a compact car for short. That's the first one. And then a minivan, a, a van. van. So Herbert, you know, um, this is so much fun. Can we do this again? I want to just, um, let's, let's stop now. And then, uh, I'll have you back on later this week and, and we'll do about the, the, the rest of my list. Would that be okay? Sounds good. Let's do it. All right. All right. Great. So always great to have Herbert on. If you like having Herbert on, please hit the like, hit subscribe, hit notify, all that kind of stuff. And then, uh, we need to, we need the people to follow you. Right. Herbert, they need to follow you at your YouTube <laughs> channel. They need to follow you on Twitter everywhere you are <laughs> so they should they should look for you at brighter with herbert on youtube and my twitter is herbert on all right Thank and you guys. down below those things will be uh, be down in the description so uh for all of you out there herbert thank you so much again for being here and for the thank rest you. of you it's been great talking to you click the link below to get your paperback kindle or audiobook now